like to nominate you as chair of this meeting, please. Thank you. And I'm happy to second that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and before we go any further, I will just uh, introduce you to my uh, fellow councillors. So if you would like to introduce yourselves, please, councillors. I'm Councillor Les Fry, representing Dorchester West. Uh, and I'm Councillor Kate Weller, representing Rodwell and Wyke. Thank you very much. Um, this is a public meeting and it will be streamed live on YouTube. Um, if, as you can hear, I've got a bit of background noise, which I'm just about to eliminate. Um, if you can keep all background noise to um, a minimum and keep any mobile phone alerts off and computer alerts off, please only turn your camera and your microphones on when you are requested to speak. The only three people that will stay on um, screen throughout the whole meeting will be the three councillors. As I said, this is um, a virtual meeting, um, so just to make you mindful that the councillors uh, on screen will be, um, we generally run off two devices, so if it doesn't look as though we're paying full attention to the camera, it is generally because we do have another device just to the side of us that's um, got all of our relevant uh, information on. Because this meeting is potentially going to be um, quite a long meeting, we have taken the decision, as it is a virtual meeting as well, that we will be having a break for 10 minutes every 10 to the hour. I know we've started late, but um, I would request that we do keep to those timings um, just so that we can get ourselves uh, into, into a sync of the meetings. Um, how the meeting will run is uh, the report will be introduced uh, by um, the licensing team leader. You'll be asked if you have any questions at that point for the licensing team leader. Then we will go to the applicant's representative for um, them to outline the their case. Again, questions will be asked. We will then go through the members of the public that have given that their right to speak. You will be called, and I do have a list here, and I will go through that list shortly just to uh, make sure that we do have everybody here. And I am just going to do a roll call now to uh, check that I've got everybody that should be before we open the meeting. So um, we've introduced ourselves as councillors, so I would now like the council officers to introduce themselves. And I'll start with the committee clerk. Good morning, I'm George Dare and I'm going to be clerking the meeting this morning. Thank you, George. Good morning, I'm David Northover. I'll be clerking the meeting this afternoon. Thank you, David. Good morning, I'm Elaine Sibyl and I'm also in attendance for Democratic Services. Sorry, I had a bit of an echo there for Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. I will now ask if uh, we could, uh, our report author for the licensing team, if they would like to introduce themselves, please. Thank you, Chair. My name is Aileen Powell. I'm the licensing team leader and I'm the author of the report. I also have another licensing officer on the call, Roy Kipax. He is our technical support. He is the one responsible for broadcasting, so he won't be introducing himself at this point. Thank you. And um, just going back to um, the broadcasting, obviously we do have a chat bar throughout the meeting. That chat bar is there just to uh, raise the issue. If you've got any technical issues, it will be monitored by a member of the Democratic Service team, but it will not be monitored by councillors. Thank you. Um, I will now ask the parties and their representatives in attendance to introduce themselves. So could I please ask the um, applicant's representative to introduce themselves, please? Uh, good morning, Councillor. Good morning, Chair. My name is Sarah Lefebvre. I'm the barrister representing the applicant. Thank you. And any responsible authorities? Michael Nisbet is now joining. I believe that we have somebody that's got the microphone on. Um, I will now ask the parties and their representatives in attendance to introduce themselves. So, could I. <laughs> <laughs> is this yes, it is rather. Um, it, is there any way we could uh, get it's a muted? It's muted. Thank you. Thank, thank you ever so much. Sorry about that. Again, yeah, technology. Who would have it, hey? Oh, okay. <laughs> Right, do we have any responsible authorities? 
Good morning, good morning. Chair. And good morning, Chair Ian Carter, uh, Licensing Officer and Chair of the Safety Advisory Group. Thank you, Ian. Good morning, Chair. My name is Jane Williams. I'm Team Leader for Environment Protection and Responsible Authority. Thank you, Jane. Okay, um, what I will do, I will just go through the list um, of attendees that we have. So I just want to be mindful that I know we've had some issues today. So I just want to make sure that all those that have uh, put their request in to speak um, on the list are actually in attendance. Um, I will start, uh, obviously I do have the applicants barrister, uh, Ms. Lefeuve, um, who's introduced themselves. Do we have um, Councillor uh, Tony Alford? You can't see him on the call, Chair. No, okay, thank you. Um, do we have Mr. Dower? Yes. Thank I'm you. Sure. Thank you. Um, do we have uh, Emma Tracy and Chris Berry? Uh, yes, uh, we're here with Simon and Megan. With Simon and Megan. Okay, thank you. And do we have uh, Lorraine Briam? Yes, I'm here. I'm also here with Karis Bream. Okay, thank you very much. And do we have um, Benjamin Doug Seymour? No, Chair, he sent his apologies yesterday. Okay, thank you. James Green? I can't see him on the no. call. Okay, thank you. And do we have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Horner? Yeah, just Mrs. here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chrissy Jenkins. Yes. Uh, Tim and Chrissy Jenkins both together. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chris Lousy, I believe Chris is the one that's um, dialing in, isn't he? He's, That's correct, uh, yeah. he's he's watching us on uh, on YouTube. Uh, Mr. Nisbet. Do we have him on? Uh, we believe that he is expecting to uh, call in. Okay, yes. Michael Nisbet here. He is oh. on the call. Hello, thank you. Um, uh, Gillian Perrot. Uh, uh, yes, Paul. I'm here. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Richard Smith. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. And I've got uh, Councillor Rebecca Knox. Yep, I'm here. Thank you, Councillor Knox. That is the list that I have for um, everybody that is wishing to speak that has um, addressed the committee uh, wanting to, to speak. Um, I believe that was that was everybody. Thank you. Um, like I said, once it's your turn, we will uh, call you. Um, all up in turn because we have got um, quite a, a lot to get, um, get through we are going to be limiting um, the questions and your statements to 15 minutes per person um, obviously we, we it, it will be timed but we're not you know we're not going to cut people off but if we could just be mindful that there will be um, a time limit there okay with that then um, I will make a start do we have any apologies Good morning. We have apologies from Councillor John Andrews. Thank you, George. Uh, do we have any declarations of interest from the councillors, please? No. Do we have any urgent business? No, Chair. Do we have any exempt business? No, Chair. Thank you very much. I'm now going to ask Aileen, our licensing team leader, to outline the details of the application, including details of any withdrawn representations. Thank you, Chair. There have been no representations that have been withdrawn ahead of this hearing. Um, I do need to point out that there are, is a numbering error in the report and the final recommendation section should be numbered section 16 and not section 13. I do apologise for that. There are a number of key decisions which have been identified within the report for the committee to consider, including whether to allow this application in the light of the representations about the advertising. This is an application that was initially all encompassing in both times and activities. The description of the premises states there will be a wide variety of events and tourism accommodation, which will include a hotel, and various types of cottages, cabins, etc. 
It has been reduced somewhat after discussion with environmental health, although the area and times for alcohol sales remain as 24-7 and site-wide. There is no clear description of exactly what types of event and how many there may be, with only a food festival being mentioned in the application and weddings in the noise management plan. This, together with the application being for 24-7, has generated a huge number of representations. The applicant has not indicated that there will be more than 5,000 people on site, so if the subcommittee are minded to grant a licence, there should be a capacity limit of 4,999 people that could be on the site at any one time, and that would include staff, artists and traders. On the matter of planning, it is for the applicant to decide whether they apply for planning permission or the licence first. There is no um, set down procedure for that. And the planning process will take full account of the concerns raised regarding the areas of outstanding natural beauty and the rights of way. There are a large number of concerns and potential conditions which have been discussed and also proposed within the representations, which the committee will thoroughly review as part of their deliberations when uh, they consider what is proportionate and appropriate to promote core licensing objectives. If a license were to be granted, it is, must be clear to all parties what the conditions mean and they must be enforceable. This is particularly relevant when it comes to those conditions relating to noise. Case law in 2011, which was developing Retail Limited versus East Hampshire Magistrates, found that a common condition referring to inaudibility at noise sensitive places is actually imprecise, vague and enforceable. And this is also discussed in the applicant's noise management statement, which refers to the 1995 code of practice limits on the music noise at rural venues, which shows that it is a different decibel level. It's appropriate for different um, numbers of concert days per calendar year. I would remind all parties that the focus of the licensing subcommittee is on the four licensing objectives, the prevention of crime and disorder, the prevention of public nuisance, public safety and the protection of children from harm. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, councillors, do you have any questions for Aileen? Not at this time, thank you. No, thank you, not at the moment. Ms Lefebvre, do you have any questions for Aileen at this time? No, thank you, Chair. Thank you. And any of those that are wishing to make a representation, does anybody have any questions for Aileen? OK, thank you all. Um, I will now uh, move on to... Um, sorry, we, we did have a... Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Good, good morning. Sign the meeting here. I'm, I'm representing um, my, my wife, who was objecting number 62. Um, the, the, the question I, I... Just a question, preliminary question I have. Um, I hope it's not too early um, on. Is it in paragraph 11.6, there's a, a recommendation uh, made uh, regarding the allowing the application to proceed despite the fact that um, initially uh, it wasn't properly advertised uh, and um, we, I'm not I'm not objecting to that on the basis on which it's put forward um, I can quite understand why that recommendation has been made but what I would like to stress is that we say it is highly significant that it wasn't properly advertised but I'm not suggesting just to make this clear that the, um, the committee shouldn't go ahead and consider the application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Aileen, did you want to come back on that point? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I think I would actually like to leave that to, to Ms Lafere to answer. That's absolutely fine. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, Ms Lafere, I will now um, pass, over, uh, pass over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, ju just a, 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 a procedural point. I know at the time's 10.45. I don't know if you're planning to take the first break in five minutes. Um, yes, I, and I'm very conscious that I have a 15-minute speaking yeah. slot, uh, which I won't overrun. Would it that, be better to take the break now and speak clean for 15 minutes? Yeah, I think I think that would be a good idea. I was uh, uh, slightly mindful of that, but like I said, I still like to keep the timings for the breaks just so we can get ourselves into a bit of a routine. But yeah, yeah, so I'm quite happy to take the break now and, and we'll come back, come back to you. 
Chair, could I could I just ask that maybe we cover the adver advertisement before we break? Would that be appropriate? Yes. Yeah, we can do. Would that would would that be okay? Have we lost? Have we lost Miss Lefebvre? She seems to have frozen. Oh yeah. I have two now. <laughs> I'm afraid everybody has a huge disadvantage now that you have me frozen on my own screen. Uh, but Mr. Cation has very generously uh, given me access to his screen. <laughs> so um, everybody gets you twice, which is unfortunate for all of you. Many yeah. apologies. No, uh, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to deal with that now at the suggestion of your licensing officer. Uh, our, our position is, uh, and it won't surprise you to, to hear this, that the application was properly advertised with a requisite number of notices distributed at the perimeter of the site uh, and care being taken to uh, place those notices where they were most likely to be seen uh, by members of the public who might be affected by the application. As you know, we submitted a plan indicating where those notices ha had been uh, displayed and a, a further plan indicating where it, it, in pink highlighter, where some of those notices had been removed and in some cases significantly destroyed. Um, your officer, if I may say so very respectfully, has uh, set out quite correctly uh, the, the implications of any flaw or technical irregularity that may have been generated through uh, through the, uh, the distribution of notices and the availability of notices. Uh, the purpose of the procedural requirement of notice display is to ensure that all those who might be impacted by an application uh, are, are made aware of the fact of the application and where to go to inform themselves of, of, the, of the more detailed application itself. Uh, that is the purpose of this part of the advertising function. Um, as your officers indicated at para paragraph 11.7 .7 of the report, uh, the application has been, on any view, widely publicised uh, through the notices on site, uh, separately in a per paper circulating in the vicinity, separately on the council's website, uh, and as they indicate, rightly, not all of the notices were ever removed. Uh, the process of uh, notification has produced that unprecedented number of representations in response, uh, and the notice, of it, notice period itself twice extended so that there's been a, a triple consultation period within which representations might be received uh, and of course once those representations have been properly received addendum representations were quite properly accepted uh, by your uh, committee members uh, so it is that the procedural purpose of the advertising regime has been well and truly met uh, your officers helpfully uh, have referred you and all readers of the report to the recent first instant High Court decision uh, in which a challenge based on uh, alleged procedural irregularity in advertising was comprehensively rejected by the High Court, uh, a wholly unarguable claim uh, described as such. Um, for those very reasons that your, your report author identifies, the procedural requirement had been met. Uh, that case itself follows a line of higher court authorities, both in the High Court and in the Court of Appeal. Uh, and we sent one such through to your offices in advance of today, the case of Aiken against the Stratford Magistrates Court in 2014, confirming precisely this, that when, when looking at procedural requirements and administrative decision making, uh, what the decision maker is required to do is look at the purpose of the procedural requirement and see whether that, that, that purpose has in fact been met if it has been met, or even if it's been substantially met, then its requirement uh, is uh, fulfilled uh, and the decision making can properly proceed. So that's a very, very long winded way of saying I agree with the observation contained in your officer's report. Thank you. Thank you for your clarification on that. Okay. We will now um, take a 10 minute break and we will reconvene at 11 a.m. Thank you.
have Miss Lefebvre? Um, at the risk of, uh, of interrupting Flo again, uh, we did have our hand raised. We, we ha did have a, a, a question that we wanted to pose. Can we do that now or should we leave it till later? No, no qu question, um, questions from, um, mem from members um, will be after the um, complete presentation. OK. Right, so we've got the uh, applicant's representation, which is a barrister, Ms. Sarah Lefebvre, and uh, Sarah is now going to do uh, the introduction. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, can I say uh, as well that I have sitting in the room with me Nick Caton, who is the proposed designated premises supervisor, and my solicitor, Lana Tricker. Uh, and between us, we would hope to be able to answer any questions that you, your colleagues, or anybody else uh, might pose of us. Uh, just a little bit more by way of introduction. Uh, I am a barrister representing this applicant, of course. I am also a very local girl. I had the great privilege of growing up on the South Somerset uh, border in and around Crewkern. Uh, I holiday to this day along the Jurassic Coast. And whilst that's not Bemonster or Newbury, I do have some personal sense of this extraordinarily, extraordinarily beautiful area. Uh, Mr. Perkins and his wife and their children, uh, they're not with us. They're all already in residence within the estate. Uh, Mr. Perkins isn't well today, uh, but if there are questions that only he can answer, uh, then those answers will be sought and obtained for you today. Uh, Mr. Caton, uh, likewise already living at the house uh, with his wife and children, proposed, as you know, to be the person with day-to-day -day control under the Licensing Act 2003 of this premises, with very, very significant and directly relevant expertise and experience. Uh, decades, and he may not thank me for saying that, but decades of, of experience uh, within this industry, but directly relevant uh, experience and expertise, uh, responsible for the management of Soho Farmhouse and for Babington House uh, for, uh, for uh, years in each case, uh, both of which share some common and important features with the Parnham. They are rural, beautiful estates situated in reasonably or well, very close proximity to residents who likewise live in small villages or towns. Uh, and those premises and venues have run without complaint or issue and have proven themselves to be happy and welcome and permanent and important settlers into their own environments. So what I'm presenting to you and your colleagues today, Madam Chair, is an applicant with a successful proven history in a rural setting of restoring and operating cherished houses and estates sensitively, carefully, without causing issue or upset in practice and reality to their local residents who equally and properly cherish their tranquility. There is one significant and important difference uh, here, uh, a, a distinction to be made with, with this uh, as against Babington or the Soho estate generally, and it's this. There is no uh, external financial investment here. And what that means is that the restoration of Parnham House, uh, with the benefit of any such license as you and your colleagues are prepared to grant us, will take place in slow and careful time, uh, slowly, incrementally, sensitively, uh, taking the community we would hope and aspire with us at every step of the way. There's little that I can say about this house and grounds that isn't already well or better known to all other participants in this hearing. I'm sitting here now. It is extraordinarily uh, beautiful and exquisite estate and historically important uh, uh, house and grounds. It's about 30% larger actually than for example, the Soho farmhouse estate. It requires, as you well know, madam, a wholesale restoration following that ghastly fire four years or so ago now. The sums of money involved in that restoration are to my ears and I'm sure yours too, equally uh, fabulous. The likely costs of the works to restore the house, the house uh, in the region of 40 million pounds. Uh, and those are costs which will dwarf the likely value of the house post restoration by about 100%. 
the arrival of Mr. Perkins and Mr. Caton here represents a proposal for a lifetime passion project to restore uh, this estate and its grounds and its house. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Perkins and Mr. Caton too have been closely involved with historic England, formerly his, uh, English heritage, of course, since well before purchase. And whilst certainly uh, that involvement is more uh, of a planning matter, the organisation is positively supportive. They've been to site four or five times already, fully aware of these proposals and intentions uh, and recognise the extraordinary value of having uh, persons involved with the, with the premises who really can, uh, can uh, through wherewithal and vision, uh, bring this, this extraordinary estate back to its former glory. Uh, we appreciate, of course, the area of outstanding natural beauty, the footpaths and bridleways, insofar as there may have been minor mismarkings on the submitted plans. We're grateful for the corrections. Uh, and the intention and proposal, of course, is to manage those footpaths and bridleways so as to ensure the public access is, if anything, improved through the arrival of uh, PEL into this estate. Similarly, with the airman's grave, uh, that uh, historically important uh, a site within the grounds, the Rhodes Morehouse family, uh, uh, well known to Mr Perkins' wife, in fact, uh, uh, and there could be no intention to restrict access uh, to uh, the grave or to prejudice in any way. It would, Madam Chair, have been surprising indeed had there been no local concern about these proposals. It seems to us, as we read the uh, carefully crafted representations, both for uh, and against, uh, and uh, in some cases, uh, balance between the two, uh, that what you're dealing with is firstly a, a concern about the general nature, the detail and scale of the proposals. Uh, secondly, concerns about noise. Uh, and thirdly, concerns about uh, uh, traffic um, and what, what it might mean for the road access in, in the vicinity. It's suggested by some uh, in their representations that this is in, in some way a premature application uh, or, or and or this should be or have been a very na narrow application subject to future multiple incremental increases uh, on a licence. Uh, that's one view. There is an alternative view and a strong argument for suggesting that such an application, such a limited or narrow application in first instance, might have smacked of disingenuity, uh, a, 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 a sense that we might have been concealing what our true uh, aspirations were for the use of, of the house and the grounds. And it is in the spirit of candour and openness that we have sought all, all the flexibility at first instance uh, that, that we really do genuinely seek uh, to operate uh, this house. It is also right and fair to suggest that the licensing process more generally is far more typically expected to accommodate much more standard, certainly much smaller operations, a public house or an off license or the like. And it is difficult perhaps to shoehorn uh, so atypical an application into an, a licensing process of, of this type. Uh, that's, of course, not to say that were this licence to be granted in the form sought or something approaching it, uh, that the company would be in a position to operate the whole of the licence immediately. Of course, that's not the case. This is a process of gradual restoration. Uh, there are multiple planning permissions that will need to be sought and scrutinised and either granted or refused, and the process of construction commenced and completed. The maximum occupancy uh, 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 at Parnham is likely to be, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, in the region of 110 or 120 persons, with somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, accommodated in the main house. Uh, uh, and those 20 or 30 uh, 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 residences likely to be completed first and in the, near, in the very near future. The very normal business, the day-to-day -day business uh, of the site will be those residents staying and enjoying the beautiful grounds as very much typical hotel guests. Uh, the abilities to eat uh, and drink uh, and walk and enjoy the grounds uh, at weekends only, uh, Thursdays to Sundays. Uh, the 24-hour alcohol and late-night refreshment licence overwhelmingly intended to service those residents. And as you and your colleagues know, uh, uh, those sorts of permissions are absolutely normal for hotel uh, overnight residential accommodation. 
the additional no normal day-to-day -day business will also involve working with the local schools, ecology work, educational work, the establishment of a centre of rope making and a nod to the smuggling connections uh, uh, historically in the site. Uh, of course, those well, as in 2003, so couldn't and couldn't appear on the application, uh, and in due course, and subject to the conditions that have been uh, proposed uh, uh, both by us and by your responsible authorities and agreed uh, to carry out uh, uh, some events, perhaps birthday parties, perhaps the occasional wedding, which will be subject to those individual event management plans that the, the revised conditions speak to. Yes, of course, anybody living in the vicinity of this estate would be concerned about noise. There are open spaces here, there are natural re geographical features, the river valley, the basin, the proximity of some residents in particular, and some very bad direct experiences of noise rehearsed through the representations to you, both at Parnham itself and elsewhere. Uh, those have been, uh, as I read the representations, the result of private parties uh, uh, and sound travelling as a result of the entertainment provided at those private parties. Uh, and you and your colleagues, Madam Chair, need no reminding that that is a key difference between private and unlicensed events and those that take place subject to conditions and restrictions and planning and limitations imposed uh, by a license, the breach of which can lead to the loss of the license uh, and the loss of the privileges per permitted through a license. Uh, you know that we have uh, suggested a, a limited boundary, that's the blue line that's shown on page 75 of the papers, and we've proposed a time limit uh, for external um, uh, entertainment events as well. Uh, and you have, of course, in your papers uh, uh, the uh, additional conditions as proposed by your responsible officers. We have submitted to you the noise management strategy at page 75 and following of your papers uh, produced for us by Joins Nash for the walled area. And excuse me, Madam Chair, all I'm doing as I look to the side now is looking at my stopwatch to see uh, how many minutes of my 15 I have left. That's three minutes and 20. So I'm on, on time and in budget at the moment. Um, uh, that's a, a noise strategy drawn up for the walled garden, uh, a relatively small area proximate to the house. The reason that strategy came into existence is, is that our property designer, having married, intends and hopes to celebrate that wedding in the, in the walled garden area. As a wholly private event, we have taken that as an opportunity to carry out uh, at sound propagation tests, assess uh, the results of those tests, and begin to establish possible parameters and control measures. You may think it would have been very easy indeed for us not to supply you with that re report. There are conclusions in it that a less candid uh, and less responsive perhaps operator might have wished not, not to serve on uh, you and your colleagues. It is a report which says in terms it's difficult to comply with the uh, guidelines of the Institute of Acquisitions after 11 o'clock in, uh, in, in the evening. Those details are... So it is that the restriction has been volunteered uh, not to carry out uh, external uh, regulated entertainment events uh, after 11 o'clock in the evening, saving for those uh, small limited numbers as agreed with your responsible authority. Y you know, too, uh, that we have... Chair, Sarah Lefebvre is frozen for me. I don't know whether she's yes, still on, yes. whether she can repeat. Please. She's frozen for me as well. Thank you. Uh, we had our backup. Uh, we'll turn it off now. Uh, the requirement through the conditions at page 67 uh, for a noise, a full noise management statement uh, and plan two months. event or uh, an event you, uh, potentially involving uh, amplified speech and so on and your officers have helpfully provided us with detailed guidance on what the content of that statement should be you know too that any individual event uh, where it's likely that more more than 500 persons might attend that is any event for which a temporary event notice would be insufficient 
will require a full event management plan to be submitted and subject to the usual scrutiny of your SAG committee. That's revised condition 30 at page 73. Uh, and that, uh, that process would typically, of course, incorporate traffic management planning specific and individualised to any such event. Uh, Madam Chair, I think I'm probably uh, right up against my timing. It's 40 minutes and 30 seconds. I'm not going to ask for the, the committee's indulgence to trespass any further. Uh, it, it really is now a matter for you and your colleagues to ask questions of myself, probably more appropriately in terms of any operational matters to Mr. Caton, who's sitting immediately to my left-hand side. But I'll stop speaking now. Thank you, Mr. Firth. Uh, Councillors, um, do you have any questions? I don't mind which one of you goes first. Uh, Mr. Fev, what has been planned for noise in the wider grounds? When you're having the 10 events per year, um, one, do we know what those events, how long they might be? Because an event could be one day or three days. And what have you thought about for noise outside that area, in that area? You're muted, Mr. Caton. Uh, sorry. That's right. Hello. It's a common phrase nowadays. You're Hello. muted. My name's Nick, and I'm here on behalf of Parnham. Um, so, the, yeah, the question was the um, length of the events and mm -hmm. the regulation, uh, the, the regularity of the events, correct? Yeah. Um, so, because the family will be living, as I will, on the estate for, well, the family for the foreseeable future, and myself for the first few years, just to make sure that operationally we learn and we make sure that we are in balance with the community. Um, we would probably limit our um, events, which would be 100, 120 people, probably to 10 to 15 a year maximum, um, of which only one of those days would we have either the celebration, which would be the wedding or the, the birthday party or such other on the days which shoulder those events, which and we only want to really, for the first few years, use Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the guests to stay, um, they would be much, much reduced, um, more sort of toned down evenings of just dinners um, and very relaxed um, sort of entertainment. Um, or outside those, we would probably aim for 30 to 35 in total, that's including the 10 to 15 events where will we be open that leaves us with a good um, 20 odd weekends a year where we would be for the family only we wouldn't have any guests staying so that it remains private they would be the special occasions obviously Christmases um, the Halloweens and things like that um, and of those weekends so the other 20 odd weekends 25 weekends outside of the uh, events we would have regular guests coming in family units or single occupancies or just couples and that would be run as a normal um, breakfast lunch and dinner service in a restaurant environment which would have very little um, background music and we would probably only look at numbers between 30 to 40 because that's the only accommodation we would have um, on the odd occasion we depending during the summer holidays we may um, it all depends on how we go in the, the, first, um, the first few months. We may look at doing um, midweek uh, some things for families and children during the days so that we can do forest schools and things like that because we really do want to be part of the community. Um, during all of these weekends, um, my past... Um, my past history meant that I obviously wanted to make sure that the community felt comfortable with what we were doing. And we would do regular noise management internally. So that would be myself and the team. We would do our own noise monitoring. I know that we've already mentioned that the first, um, first event that we would like to do um, as a sort of a sample um, um, sort of uh, event just to see how sound does travel and how we manage people here. But beyond that, um, when we have specialists present, beyond that, we would do it in-house. And I'm very experienced with recording um, on any particular day, um, 
every hour, every two hours, just the sound propagation uh, emitting from the property. Um, obviously, that would go hand in hand with any event that we would do. But on a regular weekend, um, I couldn't see any noise actually escaping. I couldn't see uh, any weekend anyway. I don't see any noise escaping because the last thing we want to do, and I, in my experience, is running the hotels and uh, estates. The last thing you want to do is to end up with your neighbours finding you a nuisance. It doesn't help for anybody. I think to clarify that, what what, what the concern is that you've, you're licensing the whole site. Whole site. Um, yeah, and, and I've got an echo of feedback. Um, um, and the, obviously the community concern, concern that you're going to have, have wide-natured wide events, events on the park level. No. So how, how we see the use of um, Parnham is if you do come here um, for a birthday party or a wedding, because the grounds are so beautiful, there are, I mean, you, there, there are countless the amount of beautiful spots. And because we will have mobile bars and we will have mobile um, kitchens, sort of in the back of horse boxes and things like that, and horse trailers, dependent on the client, we would like to have various positions in and around the grounds, weather dependent and seasonally dependent, where we can entertain and for the for all in all effectiveness take money from the guests um inside the grounds now of course we're not going to go and park uh, a bar next to the a3066 because it was just not a very nice spot but just in my experience what we've done is we've create we've used the natural boundaries of the premises as a barrier for us not to step outside um realistically you stay close to any of the buildings which would be able to house your power, your water and your waste and things like that, and anything which is predominantly a very obvious, natural, um, beautiful spot. So the lake, the um, the formal gardens, um, down by the river, which obviously runs straight through the middle of the property, on the, the top terrace, which is out the back of the south elevation of the house, probably something out towards the old um, formal front entrance and the old avenue, just because these are such beautiful spots and we just didn't want to be restricted by you have to get a drink over there with the property being 130 acres, um, convenience and also just protecting the ground so that we haven't got people traipsing backwards and forwards. And we want to be able to control. Um, and basically how, will you, how will you monitor the noise around the park? So around the park, we are not suggesting that we would do amplified music. The only space where we would, we would, we would, on an occasion where we would have 120 people, there would only be inside a marquee, which would be in the walled garden. There isn't anywhere planned at the moment for us to put another marquee up. And we probably have during the daytime some form of light um, music down by the lake. That controlled the that the um, we would set decibel level um, controls on top of any of the equipment that we have. And again, on especially for the first few events so that we could work out how that worked we would go around and do the sound monitoring ourselves with set decibel levels on perimeter spots which would be closest or to any of our neighbors can i be a little bit cynical here yeah you're going to monitor the the sound yourself we've done that in, i have done that in the past for the first event we're going to have professionals do that and in so that we can get a very good um sort of base and barometer level of um, how sound travels. And after that, I've been experienced in a member of our team. It's usually the person that works the nights or does the banking and cash up will have the ability to go out during the time that music is being played to monitor the levels. So, and I, I apologize for being a bit cynical here, and I do not doubt your expertise and skills in any way at all, but we're here to ask questions in a way on behalf of the community as well. Sure. Uh, and, and I want to find out how they can have trust and confidence in the noise monitoring system. If if this license is granted, yeah. um, what could be done to reassure the, the community that the figures won't be manipulated in a way? So they'll be recorded. Um, um, more than happy to have them available for anybody to come and check. Um, we will also have, at any point, there will be a, a phone which will be circulated through the team 
so that 24 7 was a bit like a an emergency phone as it were i would hand out this phone number to all residents that at any concern or any point they can have a direct line of communication to parnham house um more than being recorded and transparent and showing you the decibel data um, which was sufficient in my previous um, premises um, I'm open to suggestions <laughs> thank you that's, that's me right. for the moment thank you back to you chair thank you councillor fry councillor weller uh, thank you chair um we're, we're all of us um, increasingly aware of, of the environment these days um, and uh, I know that you've been working very closely with um, uh, Historic England and, and other bodies. I just wonder whether you've consulted with um, Dorset Wildlife or Natural yes. England. Um, do we have um, do we have some environmental impact uh, information on um, light pollution, the impact on flora and fauna of light pollution, noise pollution and so on? Um, I, I know that there's been some concern about light and uh, uh, yeah. night creatures recently. Well, we, as, um, and I know that the planning doesn't jump over into the licensing too much, but they obviously sit side by side. Um, Yes, obviously, because we've got Historic England and this is uh, it's a, a listed deer park, I think every tree's got a protection order on it and it's a very sensitive landscape. The planners have obviously made us do uh, so many surveys so that we make sure that we don't miss anything. We have, um, we have had um, everything from the ecology to the trees to the bugs and slugs surveys and things like that so that we can make sure we've also got specialists working on the planning side to make sure that the, the heritage impacts are not destroyed because obviously this is a very historic landscape. So everything that we do, we have to get it checked out. It has to go through the right and proper um, procedures in front of the right people. So we are incredibly sensitive to what we are doing with the grounds here. And there are certain areas from a planning perspective that we will not be able to do anything. Um, which is why we have to result to the mobile. Um, if we do want to have a bar somewhere on down by the lake, we're going to have to use something mobile. At the moment, there is no no planning has gone. Forward. So all we're doing right now is we're making sure we are protecting what we have adopted and we are now custodians of. Um, I, I, it's it's difficult to separate out the. The, the two issues in some respects the planning and the license but obviously where um my, my concern is the the noise and the light impact on um the the natural environment there which sure. is which is significant um yeah. uh, and i guess to a certain extent it's a suck it and see um we won't know what that impact is until it starts to manifest itself of course but um your monitoring hopefully will encompass that and and um, allow us to see uh if the mating habits of glowworms are dreadfully effective um by uh, uh light over the lake for example so thank you thank you councillor fry Don't, uh Mr. Cato, and I have some questions close to my heart as well. And I know there's been a lot of concern about the disruptive wild parties that Parnham Park is going to have. It's going to completely destroy the community of, of Beminster and Netherbury um, in this area of outstanding natural beauty. Would you like to comment on that, please? You say disruptive parties. What exactly do you mean? Well, because I'm just I'm just generalising the comments that, that from some of the people who raised objections. Um, I, my my honest uh, opinion is the family will be will be living here. We we the last thing we want to do is take a house as beautiful this and an estate as beautiful this, and turn it into something that nobody likes and appreciates it's going to be very small numbers 
even historic England have asked us to not um, don't basically open to the public too much so that you end up with hundreds of people walking around destroying the grounds and things like that. We are trying to sell, which everybody is in need of, um, is a beautiful, quiet, recreational experience in a high-end establishment where like-minded people can share fun and good times without keeping everybody awake at night. Um, this is a way of showing how beautiful the countryside is and can be. And for this estate to have a breath of life, life again, um, just so that people can appreciate what we have and, and what beauty there is here. So I think, I think there is fear from the unknown, from some of the objectors and some of the conversations that might have happened in Bemister and Bridport. And I think um, we need to prove to the public that actually we're going to be such a great addition to the local area. Um, past record, uh, the fact that the house will be restored. And the last thing we want is to have to manage not very nice situations. So the last thing we want is large number of people and lots of loud noise. Thank you. That's my first question. Yeah. Um, and it, we're really here, we're facilitating the people that are observing this meeting sure. and, and the local community. So I apologise. Um, clearly, you're going to have wild, outrageous parties there. They're going to need lots of police attention. How are you going to deal with security and public safety of the people well, there? The first thing is we're not going to be doing, as, as we've mentioned, there won't be any more than 100, 130 people on site. They will be all through people that we know, or there will be a, a host in charge of it. You cannot get onto the premises unless you are allowed in through our gates, which are managed by us. We will have security on the on the nights when we are operational. So say we have, well, there'll be a night manager um, during the normal um, normal weekends where there's 30 to 40 people on site in their small individual groups. And if we are having an event with the other 60 or 70 staying off site, we will have security present. I can't see any need for the police to be involved because there won't be a noise issue because we'll be managing it. And the volumes of people on site will be very, very low for the size of the estate. Some of the objectors raised issues about drink driving. Um, would you like just to comment on that at all? Um, well, I think as a responsible premises supervisor, it's my duty to monitor what's going on and how it goes on. We will have a, a car park very close to the wall garden, which is where we'll be hosting predominantly the food and drink um, on site. And in my experiences, um, you know, of, of course you have to have your wits about you and you have to follow all of the, uh, um, the licensing rules which go with alcohol. Um, it is something we can monitor for the 30, 40 people that are staying. I can't see them leaving, especially at night somewhere, would they? And for the other guests, we will have our um, receptionists will be here throughout the night and the night manager will be present. That's fine. Thank you very much. Now, traffic leaving and, uh, and arriving, do you see that being an issue that you will need a traffic management plan or anything for? No, I, I think, as I said, uh, most of the weekends, so the 25 to 30 weekends where we've only got the 30 to 40 people in the first couple of years, they will be staying on site. So when they arrive, they will be staying there. They might take one day trip out to the uh, seaside. Um, otherwise, I can't see them really using their car. And for any of the larger events, if we did have 100, 120 people here, because they'll be staying locally in accommodation, I would, we would be pushing for, for them to be using taxis. Um, again, we have space on site. We will, we're already working with some local taxi companies. We're going to get very familiar. Um, I can't see anybody walking from the premises out to the villages. So all the pickups and drop-offs will be managed from inside the premises. That's thank And that, that's also part of the planning. It's, um, you know, we, we're... We're looking at potentially, if planners allow it, um, changing the shape of the entrance. Um, that comes down to the traffic surveys and things. We're looking at is there an in and out? It all depends on 
Um, so there's a lot of work going on with car parking, traffic, uh, vehicle movement and things like that. That, no, that's really helpful. Thank you for that for the answering the questions. The reason I asked those questions is there are people observing this meeting, sitting in on this meeting, who may yeah. have questions. So I just feel it's appropriate that we ask those questions yeah. on behalf of other people there now, because yeah. you're starting relatively small. Yeah. What they will be concerned about is what the future brings for Pine and Park. Um, and where this leads them, they could say, use the phrase, it's the thin end of the wedge. Yeah. And I, I put that to, to you now um, across the board. And I think a lot of issues often arise, whether it's personal, domestic, neighbourly community through lack of communication and lack of consultation. And I, and I think you clearly know your plans inside out, but the people observing this meeting don't at this time. Sure. So it's our we're trying to draw out some of the future things. So do you have plans in place you're, you're looking at 110 130 people at the moment for weddings and parties and halloween parties and so on is there anything in the pipeline at this moment that may lead community concern no because we don't plan to go any bigger than ever having 120 130 unless it's something like the dorset food fair which obviously we would go we would come to yourselves and we would put a management plan and a traffic plan and we would work with you because we want to open that up to become uh, a community, a, a benefit to the community like it used to have here. So, no, I, I think the fear is the unknown, obviously, and that this is going to end up with four, five, six, seven hundred or more people every weekend with traffic in and out on a daily basis. In, in actual fact, it's, it's a very high end. Um, we want to keep the numbers very low because we don't want to impact the, the grounds and the garden um, in that way. We want to keep this as a very a little sanctuary almost. Um, so I, I think yours, when it's unfortunate that the planning is still going through, so you can't, you haven't seen all of what the applications, what we're trying to do with the place. And I think if we had, if we had the privilege of having planning agreed, and being able to show that to everybody what the place would look like and you could see the volumes that we will want to look after sensibly i think the fear will be alleviated so i think from our perspective we just want to have a space where we can look after up to 120 people over the next few years as i said most of the weekends over the next few years will be 30 40 50 max thank you chair back to you at the moment thank you councillor fry councillor weller do you have any okay. questions? I'm, I'm okay for the moment, thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you. Um, pretty much all of my questions have been covered. The only one that I would uh, probably like a little bit more detail on is around, um, obviously, being mindful of the food festival. Um, obviously, it gets classed as an event, um, and the word event to me, an event can last one day, an event can last for a week. Um, so I'm just sort of mindful of the events that you might have in the future. Um, obviously, you know, like you said, you will be working with obviously the licensing team around those events. Sure. But I'm just sort of trying to gauge as to how many of those event events that you would possibly have realistically in a year, where they probably you, you are probably going to attract bigger numbers than, than your uh, than your sort of 120. One to two. I can see, and I'm not even sure we would do the Dorset Food Fair next year. It all depends on everything that happens with this. And But I would love to do the Dorset Food Fair because it was already established. And people, when since I've been talking to locals, they all said it was a fantastic thing to do. Um, and I suppose the only other one would be something along the lines of a, a bonfire type event. I'm not suggesting that we do fireworks because of area of natural beauty and the wildlife um, but there's no reason why we couldn't do something at, at another time of the year so I would say probably one in the first year if any and then two to three max and they would only be uh, the larger numbers would only be if they were community based it wouldn't be because we want to put 500 people and do a two-day party it would be because we want to have five to 500 to a thousand people through the door I don't know how many we get with a food fair so that we can use local local producers and local crafts and things like that and get people together put a little stage up and just have people come and enjoy the day and it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a chargeable it would be just come and visit 
and we would just have to obviously have a have a traffic and management plan with yourselves and a licensing plan but that would be something to work on yeah okay thank you i just just want a clarification on that because obviously yeah. there were a lot of questions around you know you could appreciate that um 130 acres is a big area to be yeah. licensed um and the, you know in regards to people thinking 100%. that you're going to have and, have um, uh, events but i think the know. family would be absolutely distraught if we ended up with a lot of people coming and traipsing through their garden that they have just spent a year trying to put back to absolutely beautiful and apart from that i don't think the gardeners would talk to me again so <laughs> Uh, Councillor Weller, I believe, has a question for you. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's following on from your question, um, Chairman, and, and um, I'm, I'm guessing that Mr Caton will be happy to reassure um, those people around the village, villages surrounding um, that you are not planning to be the next um, uh, Glastonbury uh nebworth or or anything else because absolutely uh, the furthest from it we could be thank you councillor fry so uh, mr caton thank you for your answer so far some other issues that have been arisen through the objectors is that the yep. management of the rights of way through through the park when you have events going how will you manage that and how will you protect children from going and buying alcohol and getting completely drunk and protection of children effectively there and managing the rights of ways well we obviously none of the rights away will be affected they are public rights of way um we have learned especially over the last year um that we need to do the maintenance and the signage of them um I think we also need to have on the event days, um, we need to have sensible communication to anybody that comes through the property. Um, I do believe that the blue line now is suggesting that uh, the only one path that comes through the estate would be the one that crosses from the uh, A3066 over the River Brit. So that would be the only public right of way through or close to the estate which would have a licensable activity in it. And that could very easily be managed, as I said, with signposting, event notices that could go up the day before, two days before, week before, whatever we decide. Um, and then because the wall, the way that the walled garden is and where the car park hopefully will be, if planning say yes, is there will be a presence on the door because of the reception. And obviously our team will be, if there's an event on for 130 people, there will be 15 to 20 of us. And I think very quickly you'll be able to, well, especially from a children's perspective, you'll be able to make sure that you can manage their movement and if they are supposed to be part of the party or not. Thank you very much. Um, you have the two cottages nearby. The mill cottages. Yeah. What sort of impact would you envisage that your events might have on those? I'm hoping very, very little. And I believe I, I would love for the residents there to be um, very close neighbours and they should feel free to pop in at any time. They will have my direct number as well as the Parnham phone number, which um, will always be manned. Um, and I think it's uh, also one of these we work together to make sure that we are in harmony so that it's not just a, well, this is what we're doing. So I think it's, it's a teamwork. And I, I, I I'm hoping that there is no disturbance because that's what we're going to work together to make sure happens. So I just want to sum up the way I've understood some of your answers at the moment. Yep. 110 to 130 people in a high end uh, location or music contained within the walled garden. Um, no, that's not that's no music. The music predominantly will be inside the walled garden. But we would like the ability on a day such as today to be able to take some music down to the lake. There might be uh, an acoustic band playing down there. There may be amplified music down there. Um, but again, it will be managed. Um, but we want to be able to use food, drink and music around the estate inside the designated areas. Fine. And, and your, uh, your, the, your noise monitoring plan will be active throughout wherever the music is and manage within that yes absolutely that's fine thank you chair for the moment thank you councillor fry councillor weller 
I'm, I'm okay for the moment as well, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any further questions. Um, councillors obviously doesn't have any further um, questions at the moment. Um, I am um, mindful of the time. Um, so I will um, go to um, our licensing team leader, team leader, Aileen. Aileen, do you have any questions? Not at this time, thank you, Chair. Okay, um, well, um, then I've got the responsible parties. We do have environmental health here. Does environmental health have any questions for the applicant, the applicant's representative? Um, thank you, Chair. I have no questions to ask. They were adequately portrayed by the councillors. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, what I will do, because um, obviously questions now um, will be over to those that have made representations and I will go down through the list. Um, what I will do, I will start with those after we've had our 10 minute breaks. I'm mindful that we are coming up to that. Um, but I will just like to say before we go into um, the um, members that have put in their representations, at this point, when um, you are um, uh, addressing the applicant it is for questions and any clarification it's not for statements obviously you do have your opportunity um, later on to, to, to have your say so you do get your say but I just want to make sure that um, you know th these are questions that, that have answers and they are not going to be statements to the applicant at this time okay so um, I will now um, have a break and we will resume again at midday thank you very much Thank you.
welcome back everybody. Um, this session will run until one o'clock um, because there is the scheduled break between one and two um, on YouTube. So the second part will start at 2 p.m. Um, so just going back over before the break, this is now time for um, the residents that have made representation to uh, ha uh, ask questions to the applicant and I state that it is um, it is questions only and anything for clarification and uh, can I also ask that if you feel as though your question has been covered by somebody else uh, could you please sort of refrain from asking the same question again um, and again you will will get your chance to have your say um, later on so I'm going to start from the list that I have I do have um, Councillor Alford on the list first. So, Councillor Alford, do you have any questions for the applicant? No, okay, I will move on. Um, Mr. Dower, do you have any questions for the applicant? Yes, please. Michael Dower from Beminster Area Eco Group. Uh, you have sought to reassure us with your figures of numbers of people that would normally be present, talking about 100 to 130 people, and only for events such as the food fair running up to 500 or 1,000. My understanding is that you do not need a license for any numbers up to 500. Why did you apply for the license in that, in that respect? Uh, rather than simply relying on applying for ad hoc licenses for major events. I think that, I think that's probably. Probably a question for me and or your legal advisor, in fact, to answer. But uh, there is. Uh, as, a, as a statement of law, that's not right. If you engage in a licensable activity at all, you're required to have the necessary premises license uh, in order to provide that licensable activity. The carve out that may be being referred to is that if, uh, if a premises benefits from a, a permission to supply alcohol as a licensable activity, then such premises is permitted to provide uh, live music uh, as a regulated entertainment uh, for numbers up to 500 persons uh, for the duration of, of the period of time that the premises is permitted to sell uh, alcohol. Uh, so that would be my answer, but it may be better, better answered by uh, Madam Chair, one of your licensing officers. Thank you. Um, I will go to um, Aileen, if I may, for clarification on that, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, um, uh, yes, I mean, I think there's an echo somewhere. Thank you. Um, some that is absolutely correct. Um, if if you provide a licensable activity, it will need to be covered under a license, and there are some um, points where the, you don't need to have specific licenses covered. So quite rightly, if you've got an alcohol license and the audience is under 500 and it's for on sales and it's being used for on sales, then the Live Music Act does kick in between 8 o'clock and 11. There all are also quite a lot of other um, things that aren't licensable, such as um, the plays, I think, and the indoor sports for different levels of audiences. But I'd have to look that up for the exact figures for each one. But indoor sports is a thousand. May I ask a supplementary, please? You may. Uh, does Mr. Caton realise that the very openness of the licence application for this wide range of events, which appear to apply between 500 and, and 5,000, beyond which you need a different kind of licence, is a major cause of worry to people of the openness of the potential for holding many very big and varied events. I'll answer that. In yes, please. First instance, and Mr. Caton can follow up. I, I, I hope the primary answer to that question is clear. Yes, we do realise uh, that the local community um, is, is concerned 
we would have been surprised, as I said in my opening remarks, had there not been concerns. Uh, what we've sought to do and what a, a large part of this hearing about it is about it is uh, permitting us I've been oh that's going to say I believe you're frozen can you, can you repeat that last paragraph <laughs> in an extremely unflattering position it's, it's fine <laughs> Are you able just to repeat that last paragraph? We sort of lost you part way through that, please. Thank yes. you. Uh, uh, I'll be brief and then hand to Mr. Caton. I, I hope it's clear to members of the committee and to those others who are watching this hearing uh, that, yes, we do appreciate uh, that there would be very real concerns amongst the local residents, amongst the local community. Uh, 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 I hope that through uh, today's hearing, the answers that we've already given and the extent of planning in, in advance that's gone on with your responsible authorities, including, of course, the police who are out here in attendance and inspecting the site before the application uh, was made, uh, that uh, we are working extraordinarily hard, both in crafting the entertainment uh, and licensable activities themselves and in controlling those licensable activities to make sure that the footprint is it is genuinely light uh, 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 and we would hope uh, it experiences a non-footprint by, by the local community. Uh, that's the primary answer. Yes, we do realise it uh, and yes, we take those uh, even potential putative concerns uh, very seriously indeed. I'll just hand Mr Caton's computer back to him to see if there's anything he would add to that answer. Um, hello. Yeah, no, as you said, I think it would be one of the last things on our mind is to create that sort of environment inside this estate. Um, it's very far from the purpose and what we're trying to do with bringing this estate back to life. Thank you. Mr Dowell, do you have any further questions? No, I'm grateful. I will be raising my own points later. OK, th thank you very much. Um, it might, before, before I go on to the next person, it might be just worth um, mentioning and just bring it to everybody's attention that um, any license that is granted, um, should there be any issues with that license, as in if you have proof that there's any issue with that license, any evidence, then a license can be called back in to the licensing committee for a review. And on that review, timings can be tailored and, and there can be a lot of changes made and there can be t conditions attached. So I just I just want to make, make people mindful that if should a should a license be granted, there is always scope for the license to be pulled back in um, and, and reviewed by by a licensing subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I will now. Um, do I have Emma Tracy and Chris Berry? Do you have any questions for the applicant? Uh, yes, we do. Um, uh, it's really, a, a, actually, uh, I, I can frame it in the form of a, of a question if you really if need you me could, to. If you could, please. Uh, okay, so my question is, um, why is it that uh, having lived in the, on the estate for a year, uh, you don't know that there are still major routes of, uh, rights of way that go through that blue area? Uh, I can uh, illustrate, if I, if I may, um, <coughs> So I'm, I'm now sharing my, my screen. Hopefully you can see that. This is the, this is the map that was uh, part of the, 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 the sort of second application, if you like, the, the varied application, with showing the blue boundary. There is a major road right of way, which is the hardest way uh, running, if you can see my hand running along approximately this route here. Uh, through there, through the, all these houses here, uh, but definitely crossing through this blue area. Uh, so it's surprising to me that you were not aware of that. This blue area does extend all the way up to the, the airman's grave is around here, uh, all the way up this hill and definitely includes those rights of way. Chair, I'm not sure if this is a licensing question or not. I don't believe it is. No, I believe it would be um, 
that that would be down to um, okay, a, but, but, uh, a, com a conversation that you would have with planning with regards to the rights of way. That's fine, but the rights of way were, were, were raised and a statement was made which was not correct. Okay, we will uh, take note of that. Thank okay. you. Do you have any no um, questions? However, uh, we do have Simon Megan here. Uh, would it be better for him to speak now or or would you like to go through the list? Um, if you, I mean, I mean, I'm happy. Councillors, are you happy if um, Mr. Megan speaks now? It may, makes sense that he's... Uh... If he has any questions now, yes. yes. If yes. there's statements, no, they can wait until no. yeah. him. Yes. I'm not interested so in statements. I'm happy to ask some questions. Um, okay. Just to get this clear, um, what you're saying is that you envisage that there will be so that we all know what the position is, uh, no more than 120 to 130 people uh, using the premises, that's the whole of the premises, right, normally, and that apart from occasional events, those people will effectively be uh, accommodated as hotel guests, so they'll all be residents, is that correct? That is that is correct, yes. And that the sort of event one might be talking about is um, a food fair, for example. Correct. But not necessarily in the next 12 months, maybe two years' time or whatever. Right. Right. Now, has it always been the plan to have those number of that, that number of people and no more? As far as you're aware? Yes. We're when we get to our capacity, if we ever get there, depending on the planning and the use and the restoration of the main house, we never want to go to have more than 120 people staying on site overnight. Right, so, they're, they're, well, you say staying on, on site overnight. I, I did say that the only people who would be using the site would be the people who would be staying overnight. Yeah. That's yeah. correct, isn't it? Yes. Right. So it's always been the plan to have those sort of numbers and to have um very limited um events correct right why wasn't that why weren't those factors uh reflected in the original conditions which were attached to the application and i'm going to pass this to sarah and i think my my it's not necessarily a legal question this it's a factual question i would say uh, yes, it, it is a factual question, but the document was drafted by uh, solicitors instructed by the estates. Uh, and the general answer is in common with virtually every licensing application that is ever made for any new premises license. Uh, the application is wide enough to, uh, and has to be wide enough to capture uh, the flexibility uh, that uh, the licensee or the would-be licensee uh, seeks. Uh, and so uh, whilst if this was a, a single type use ever premises, it would be possible to say, well, for example, here's a capacity figure and here's a capacity figure and here is the single event and this is the date that this will ever take place on. Uh, that is not the shape of an application that, that, that could ever be made on behalf of this, this part. Uh, what we've been able to give you and what we have given you today are the typical numbers of residency, the kinds of events that would happen outside the residency, uh, the large scale events like the food fair. We've talked as well about the occasional wedding or party that might take place. Uh, and so, so it is that the license is crafted deliberately in that broad way, but with additional conditions bolted into it uh, to manage and control uh, the potential larger scale events with the assistance of the uh, local authorities. So that's why uh, I I'm answering that question, because that is a a an absolutely standard way of crafting and drafting not only the application itself, but the conditions that govern uh, and control the would-be or potential uh, premises license. Well, thank um, you, Mr. Bird. Yes, I, I, I've got some further questions. Yep, that's uh, fine. Yes. Um, I, and I'll make an observation about what's been said there uh, later on. Um, 
the, the, where, well, that's following on from that. It's perfectly possible, isn't it? And it, this has been suggested, in fact, on page 19 of the bundle of documents by the licensing officers in their recommendation uh, paragraph, paragraph 13, which we all have in front of us, um, that in fact, the way to deal with this matter is, well, are you aware of this, Mr. Caton, is to, is to and, and you could easily do this, is to say, well, let's have a, a limited license at the moment. And then if, for example, we have an event like the food fair, which, re which require, if it requires a license, um, then an application can be made for variation of the original license, if any is granted. That would be a perfectly proper way of dealing with it, wouldn't it? I think that that's one way of dealing with it, Mr. Megan, but the other way is to incorporate it within the, the holistic license, uh, uh, avoid the need for hearings of this type to be constituted uh, repeatedly in front of the council uh, and condition robustly uh, as the proposals are through, uh, through uh, the license conditions. Any potential event, uh, as you know, that the, the capacity uh, number or trigger capacity that's being suggested by the responsible authorities here is of 500, which will bring into effect the full event planning and SAG planning uh, that would attach to uh, typically, in fact, much larger events. But, but that is a hefty degree of additional control represented through this premises license. So uh, we accept that that's one way of doing it that you, you propose, uh, but the neater uh, uh, and, in fact, more cost effective from the council's point of view, apart from anything else, way of dealing with it is, is, is this premises license. Well. Of course, we accept this matter for the committee in due course uh, as to any additional conditions they feel appropriate to impose on any premises license they're minded to grant us. Well, not my suggestion. In fact, it, it comes from licensing officers. Um, and, and, uh, and in fact, of course, the idea of, of saving the council's time is very interesting. But if, if this extraordinarily wide application extraordinarily wide. If, if the committee is starting to think that this is a normal approach, then I'm afraid they need to be disabused of that. Um, if, that if, if, this, if this extraordinarily wide application had not been made, we might not all be sitting here today having to deal with this, um, all of these issues. Um, let's, let's go on to look at the question of um, the, um, the point that you've made about um, the only people basically who are going to be uh, are going to be there of 120 to 130 people. Um, they're the people who are staying overnight. It, 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 the position is this. Why do you need a 24-hour license for the supply of alcohol to anyone, which is what you have at the moment, which is what you're asking for, Mr. Caton? Um, why isn't that going to be restricted? Why should it be restricted to bona fide hotel guests who are actually staying on the premises? Uh, uh, and again, this this is a, a standard way of licensing a hotel type of accommodation. It is uh, uh, that there simply wouldn't be anyone else here on the premises able to purchase uh, alcohol in those uh, outside those times. Uh, so there's nothing sinister, unusual at all about an application that's crafted in this way. But again, a matter entirely for the subcommittee if they uh, deem it appropriate to, to restrict or further condition. And of course, it, uh, standard hotels d don't normally ask for an alcohol license covering 130 acres, do they? I think you'll find, that, 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 Chair, that there are hotels with with a wide range of things, having been to some weddings over the last few years, where locations, and I'm thinking of a couple, particularly one that I've been to not that long ago, where the, the soap was licensed for that. Yeah, um, but uh, I would just like to be mindful that I'm here today to discuss this licence and not a licence for other premises. And obviously the applicant does have the right to uh, put forward whatever he deems fit for his um, for his for his premises. Do we have uh, any further questions? Yes, can I also just raise the question of whether the, the applicants considered applying for under they could as they could have done under the Act under Section 29, etc., a provisional statement? Because this is the application that people use, this is the route they use, they don't apply for a premises license, if premises are being built or, or if premises have to be in some way um, extended. W was that route ever looked at here? 
Uh, well, we met the process that went behind this application was uh, extensive involvement with the licensing officer and the responsible authorities. This uh, application was crafted because this is the application that reflects uh, this premises and what we what we want to be able to do and start doing. So, of course, we're aware of the uh, terms and uh, 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 various applications that can be made under the Act, but this is the application we have chosen to make. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Can we um, just look at some of the uh, conditions that are being um, suggested? For example, the new condition 32, how, how Mr. Caton, you're going to be the person on site who is going to be responsible for making sure that the law is complied with if the license is granted or any license is granted. How does, some, how does that work, number 32? What does it mean? You can see it on page 73 of the bundle if you want to look at it. with me. And it's particularly the relationship between number 32 and, and number 23. Number 23 is the one which I don't accept, by the way, that this has been properly drafted, but in any event, it seeks to cut down um, to the 10 occasions a number of, a number of uh, 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 um, um, events, as it were. Um, uh, what, I, what I still don't understand is how, but you probably do, how 32... In, has, uh, how, how it relates to 23. So 32 was something we put in to so that we could communicate with the uh, authorities to make sure that how we approach any event, um, we're all on the same team. And let me just go to 23. Wait, wait, sorry, can I stop you there? What, how does 3 a.m. come in? Sorry? It mentions 3 uh, mm. Operation... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate this question has been directed to Mr. Caton, but the simple answer is that Condition 32 was part of the original uh, set of conditions proposed by us. Uh, we were asked by the responsible authorities to agree to their additional conditions, which represent, uh, in respect in particular of Condition 32, uh, a strict uh, further restriction on the uh, and clearly, provide a strict condition that was proposed to and uh, uh, by by us with the environmental health. So, so it, the question is how do they marry it? The um, answer is that the environmental health conditions being agreed uh, trumps. Uh, otherwise, we could compliance with the Sarah, Sarah's breaking up a bit. Can you yeah, ask to I, relay that, please? Yeah, I'll think about something. Sarah, we're we're um we're struggling we're, oh, we're struggling to hear you. You 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 you're very very intermittent. Shall I? Let me try that again with Mr. Catons, and I'll 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 answer it more shortly. Condition 32 um, was part of the original package of proposals. Uh, on consultation or further consultation with the responsible authorities, uh, a narrower condition, a more restrictive condition was proposed uh, by uh, to us and agreed by us. That's the second condition that Mr. Megan's referring you to. Uh, on the package of amended conditions that we're looking at at the moment, condition 32, as originally drafted, has survived. You and your colleagues may think it appropriate uh, to strike through condition 32 uh, to make uh, Mr. Megan's point about consistency good. Thank you. So, so it's irrelevant. That's the answer. That's what I understand. It shouldn't be there. Any further questions, Mr. Megan? Um, uh, yes. Um, has any risk ass assessment been carried out in, in relation to the, um, the, the... There's a policy document that we all know about, the Dorset um, Council licensing policy document, um, um, which um, says at paragraph 6.11, if relevant representations are made, the council will only grant the hours of use 
proposed where the operating schedule and any risk assessment adequately demonstrates that the applicant has uh, properly considered what is appropriate for the local area. Do we know, have, has anyone seen this? I, I don't think I have, but maybe someone else has seen it. There's no form. There's no formal risk assessment completed, so the application stands on the documents that have been presented as part of the application. and the evidence and answers that the committee are receiving in the course of today. That particular aspect of the policy, as we understand it, but this is a matter, of course, for the committee, uh, it is intended to manage uh, external events, and it really is the conditions uh, that have been proposed by environmental health and, in particular, the obligation to produce the full uh, site-wide noise management plan two months in advance of any event taking place. Uh, that, that, that would represent that uh, risk assessment process, uh, uh, of course, the SAGs for the, for the slightly larger scale events. Uh, can I also ask um, just two further questions, I think. Um, uh, one way of approaching um, the, um, the matter and to allay the concerns of uh, local people is to restrict the area covered by the liquor license. Uh, in other words, that it doesn't cover the whole of the 130 acres or all. Um, has the applicant uh, offered this as part of the ever? I'm not aware, maybe I've missed this as well. Sorry, could you repeat the question? We we started breaking up to right. I, I believe the I believe the question um, was around um, has ha, have you thought about um, reducing the area for the license? So instead of the whole of the estate, the whole of the 130 acres being licensable, have you had you had you thought about um, only having a percentage of the say say probably the house and the surrounding areas? Um, I believe that was the question that was asked. Yeah, I mean, there's, we can definitely look at that. I mean, I can't see us needing to go west of the River Brit. Can't see that as a necessity. Um, as I said, we wouldn't really want to be going close to any roads. Um, we do want the vicinity of the house. We do want the lake. We do want to use the South Deer Park. We will want to use the Dower House which is the old gatehouse, because that at some point will become part of the accommodation available to people. And that does have a swimming pool already attached to it. So the, by all means, we can have a look at the shape and size of the licensable areas. Um, and then obviously using uh, the special, the TENS licenses and things, we can look at doing special events like the food fair, which would then have designated areas for drinking. But there's no reason why we can't have a look at that again. It is something we can consider those definitely. Yes. Thank you. Can I get some clarification in relation to what the master plan, what master plan we're talking about? Because the application, and we have to look at this formally, has attached to it um, a master plan, um, which is at um, uh, page 44 of the bundle. Um, that is, uh, that is the first master plan that we um, we see but recently so if we can uh, bear that in mind that's the one with the red um uh, area delineated the whole of the um the whole yep. of the estate and all the buildings within it there's also a legend um which relates to 12 buildings on on the site not all of the buildings on the site are, are, are set out there and then recently as far as i'm aware if we see uh, page 280 of the bundle We've got another master plan, which is significantly different, uh, and the legend is different. Which master plan are we supposed to be considering in relation to, because this is a formal document that has to be accompany, as you know, the application, which one are we considering? Number 44 or number, page 44 or the one at page 280? Yeah, so currently what we're doing for licensing is page 74. 74. 
Um, obviously, planning sits separately to this and, and is an ongoing process with feedback that we are getting. Um, sorry, but we are currently looking at page 74. So, so 74, which is the blue boundary one, so we're not concerned with the 44 one, which has to be... No. So what happened was originally we wanted to use, just for previous, pre, previous experiences and previous properties, we just used the perimeter of the, the grounds or the estate of the hotel. Um, in this occasion, we, we put that forward and uh, we then had um, conversations with the authorities, um, mostly to do with uh, the music side of the license, which was um, which goes hand in hand with the alcohol. And we said, well, let's just take the boundary for the music and the drink away from Beminster Town so that we're basically bringing it closer to the house. So that so, is why you will have seen an updated plan with a blue line, I believe. I was just printed in. Right. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Uh, yes. Sorry, I just I, I, I'm. The blue, so the blue boundary, which for some reason I thought was relating to amplified music and noise, um, is also the boundary now to be licensed for alcohol, is it? That's what the application is? That's what you're going to say. Yes. Sorry, can you repeat that question? Because again, yes. uh, a little Just bit of feedback here. Let's, let's look at the, let's, let's start, it's so much more simple if we look at the document. Page 40. So it's just the question that I'm missing. Are you ready? Page, page 40. Yes, could you, could you repeat the question? Yes, page 44 is the, is the, um, the plan that's attached to the original application, or the application that is in fact before this uh, subcommittee and that shows the area of the whole of the estate as far as i'm aware um and it, it there's a red boundary going around the whole of, of the area that's required to be licensed that's on page 44. i asked a question originally about what the position is in relation to page 280 yes which shows another master plan um uh, and which can which deals with um different uh, buildings as well as um, it, it has extra buildings on it and a different legend from 44 i was confused about that what i'm now told is that if we go back to 74 which is the one that has the blue line on it that the blue line area encompasses not just or the blue line is significant not simply because in relation to noise but it's actually significant and restricts the area for which the alcohol license is being sought. Now that's complete news to me, but maybe I think that's what Mr. Cotton's just said. So uh, you didn't miss here. Uh, it, it is right, and I hope it, it was clear from the way the committee documents have been put together that it's page 74 that was the revised plan uh, 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 in respect of which the license has been sought. Uh, it's right, as you'll be aware from reading the papers, that that blue dotted line, uh, certainly in the electronic form, uh, it, it was the subject of the condition uh, intended to restrict uh, external events. But as you've just heard Mr. Caton say in response, firstly, to an earlier question of yours, in fact, an early question of the committees as well, uh, we don't expect to be uh, providing alcohol uh, site-wide. Uh, and if it is a comfort to the committee, uh, and a comfort to others on this call, then that blue dotted line boundary could could well be applied to the supply of alcohol as well. Well, I'm, I'm afraid it, it's, it, may, it may be a comfort, but uh, um, can I point out that 74, uh, being shown the original in colour, I don't have that in my file, that doesn't matter, has the red boundary on it, as well as the blue. Yes, it would. So it is the whole area that's on 44. So that, I'm afraid, is not what I, that's the reason I, obviously I've seen the original in colour, that's why I, 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 uh, uh, I the, the colour might have been a difficulty, the blue line was intended uh, to, uh, well, I, I perhaps can't improve on the previous response, uh, and hopefully that, that uh, provided a degree of clarification to you, Mr Megan. Uh, it might, may have done, I hope the committee or the subcommittee, the people who, 
we need to have this clarified because I'm 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 amazed to hear that I have to say. Um, and anyway, I shall I shall I shall comment upon um, that la later on. Can I just ask one further question of Mr. Mr. Caden in relation to um, the buildings, whichever plan master plan we're looking at, um, which buildings could actually be used for licensable activities at the moment? At the moment, we would use what we're calling the West Wing, which is part of the original house and has a roof and has been refurbished. We will be we will be using any of the other dwellings. So the Dower House, which is the original gatehouse, we so will be Dower using. House, and there's the West Wing, you said. West Wing and the who Dower House. That? I'm sorry. Who, 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 does anyone living in the West Wing at the moment? No, it's used as our, our office space or when our friends and family come and stay. Okay, so we're the currently rest, sitting the, in the West Wing. Our house. Yes, what else? Okay, um, then we would like to use the cottage that I'm staying in. This is down the line because obviously that will become form part of the accommodation. Where, where, we want where, where, where do we see that on the plans? Uh, <clears throat> I don't think you've actually got a number. It is, is it very no, it is very close to, yes, it's very close to number five. Right. Okay. We would then like to use, yep, yeah, then we would like, we will be using uh, a temporary structure should we get our plan in, which will be a tent, which will be our day-to-day um, -to -day on the weekends when we have guests here, food and drink. And then there'll be a small area, um, which will kind of be a potting shed, which we would like to people to be able to, and it'll be a little bit of a, um, There'll be arts and crafts in there as well. Um, and then all of number 11, which will be the lodges, which we intend to have operational for next year. We would like for people to be able to buy alcohol there. Um, the, the river lodges? But, but they're not in existence at the moment, are they? No, they are not. No, well, I did say currently what could be used. Okay. So, that's, um, so currently, Dower, West Wing, Cottage, Stables. And that would involve you leaving, you wouldn't be able to live in the cottage when that was happening. Right. Um, and you did talk about planning applications. Um, what planning applications have actually been submitted? Sorry, sorry, to... pla planning is completely irrelevant. I'm not, no, not, I'm not taking with any um, questions. With respect, with... he raised That's... the point. Not... Um, I... I, I will not be taking any questions with um, with regards to planning. I we, we, we are here for licensing and we need to stick around the licensing objectives. We certainly need to stick around the licensing objectives. I agree with that. Yes, we do. So if we can keep the questions to the licensing objectives. Um, so I shall be addressing you on that later on. Um, at the moment, I won't take up any more of your time. OK, thank you ever so much for your questions. We, we, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now have um, Lorraine Briam. Do you have any questions for the applicant? Yes, I do. Thank you. Hello. Um, everything. Can I speak? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> everything so far that Mr. Caton and Mr. Feb have said um, completely contradict what Mr. James Perkins has said himself to the press and to people that he's spoken to in the community so far in the last year. He has stated that he intends to have an adventure theme park at Parnham House. He's stated he intends to have jugglers roaming the grounds, actors roaming the grounds, interacting with people who are visiting, and also have giraffes roaming the grounds. Now, I'm sorry, but um, and also he mentioned that it was going to be a Batman styled theme park. How legal that is, I've no idea. But also and that it would be have have music events at the uh, on the premises. Well, everything that's been said today makes it sound like a, a quiet little country park. That's not what has been put out in the press, and that's not what has been related to people who have already spoken to the owner. 
So why are we being told different things now? That's one question. I do have others, but okay. if you could answer that for me, yeah. please. Okay. Okay. Obviously, we're, uh, we're us as, as councillors are not privy to what um, goes on and is said in the press, basically. Well, we are very, very close to Parliament. I mean, you know, as the crow flies, we're far less than a mile, yeah. as is as is and Beminster. And in his previous um, place, he was just under nine miles from any major town. Bridport's only six miles mm -hmm. from Beminster, but far enough for it not to affect anybody. Everything that has been proposed so far seriously affects around the 5,000 people that live very closely to Parnham House. I, I you will, I will, yeah, I will ask if your question can be answered with regards to the events. Obviously, we've heard what type of mm. events are going to be uh, that, that are, are going to be held there. Um, so, yeah, I'll um, allow for your uh, your question to be answered and obviously just clarification on the uh, on the type of events. We'll do the best we can in a, in a, in a sort of a, a tag team, uh, myself first and then Mr. Caton following on. It, it is right that Mr. Perkins is. Oh, God, um, frozen again. Uh, You're frozen. Yeah, you have frozen again. Chair, can, Chair, can I just come in there and say a lot of the issues that Miss, a lot of these issues are, raised are, like are planning issues and nothing to do with our licensing objectives. What is said in the gossip, what is said in informal chit chat is not relevant here today. We can only deal with what's in front of us formally. Yeah, that's what I've said. Obviously, we're not privy to what is in the well, press because um, it's of no, you know, because it's not what I just want well, to clarify. Excuse me. I'm I, sorry, but the owner's intention is relevant to this excuse, whole thing. Can, yes. And it was the owner who called for Could these Could you please let releases. me speak? Thank you. Um, just going back to Councillor Fry's point, to take on board the point Councillor Fry has made, but what I want is just, I just want clarification from the applicant just as to the type of events. We've heard what type of events they're going to have, so I just want to clarify again that type of events, and then, you know, we will, we will move on. Um, yes, as I've already mentioned, the type of event that we will be doing is not what we have just heard. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Can I, as, as, I, as I'm yeah. here at the, at the same computer, Karis Bream, yeah. I'd just like to ask one question. Absolutely, um, yeah. Uh, it's just to do with how you plan to measure sound. And I know the, uh, the, the shape of the local landscape has been mentioned, but we actually live um, just above Netherbury, which uh, neighbours Parnham Estate, and uh, we can hear pretty much everything that takes place, any event. There was one last weekend, I believe it was at Mapperton Manor. Um, they must have had a wedding or, or some kind of event there, and I could quite literally hear the lyrics to the music being played. That is how well sound travels through this valley. So my suggestion is that whilst you may be measuring sound at the location directly on top of the speakers, what you may not be measuring is how that sound carries throughout the valley to us who are sitting yeah. here at three o'clock in the morning listening to your amplified music, which may be within limits um there on on site but is amplified just through the nature of the landscape and and are we going to have to sit through 10 20 weekends all through the kind of spring summer autumn leisurely trying to enjoy the peace and quiet and tranquility of this pocket of west dorset uh listening to someone's party um i mean that that's my question thank <laughs> you um, so we have, we are using the company which is doing our sound strategy and they will be recording on the perimeters of our, not at the source. And it's something that I've done before, so maybe I wasn't clear enough when I mentioned, but previously when we've recorded it ourselves and had all the data available for anybody to see and for the council's use, um, we recorded them at sensitive locations on the perimeter and would even travel beyond our perimeter to see what our local neighbours would be. 
So how far beyond the perimeter of Parnham um, are you prepared to travel to measure the sound? Because obviously sound rises, it yeah. goes up and we're up, we're above you. Um, we can pretty much see your estate from where we are. We're very fortunate, we have lovely views, but we can <laughs> see you and we can hear you probably if you're going to be playing amplified music. Yes. Um, so it's just, we want some kind of assurance that that you are not just going to be worrying about the people who literally sit directly next door to you and that the, the reality is that sound travels far beyond that way up here to where we are. Um, I'm just, so, yeah. Yes, um, we want to work with you. We want to work with our sound consultants and we also want to learn to what is acceptable and isn't acceptable. So as I said, we're only going for 11 o'clock amplified music so beyond that you shouldn't be hearing us okay would you be prepared to do more sound tests um and actually come up here yes where we are to where the sound travels hundred percent and and measure would, that just to make sure love, that i would love to come to your property seeing as we're neighbors say hello and take it from there so that we can open a dialogue absolutely okay. thank you that's great. I'm going to pass you back to my mother. I think she has um, one more question for yeah, that's, you. That's, that's yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yes. Yeah. I just, um, as uh, uh, Mr. Cason has said that uh, they very much want to work with the local community here, um, I just wonder why um, no public consultation has been set up to A, introduce themselves to everyone in the local area and also B, to explain exactly what is going to happen there we've we've been fortunate enough to live in a very quiet tranquil peaceful part of west dorset that is relatively unspoiled and to bring in what we perceive to be the plans for parnham at this juncture really is making everybody incredibly nervous and i think one of the only ways to appease people's worries is to actually talk to them have an open public consultation possibly in, in the grounds and then just find out exactly what it is that you propose because we have also i know this is not a, a, a definitive part of now but both Bab babington house soho farmhouse are near to major roads we are not we are, it's very quiet around here. And that particular road that goes past Parnham is very dangerous. I know two people have been hit head on by uh, oncoming vehicles. So uh, th there is a lot of worry for people and a public consultation would help enormously, I believe. Chair, can I come in here just to, to pick up on that point? Uh, Lorraine Brenner, your, your, your point about living in a tranquil, lovely rural setting is not lost on the councillors and should, if, this application be granted and we're a way off from that yet. One of the things I do believe in is, that, and Sarah Lefebvre will support me and Nick will also support me, that the licensing authorities and the powers do have the power to call in the license. Should evidence substantiated complaints be made from the community, you've actually got a very good power within this to do it. And I have seen some of the applications that commented and said, why don't you start a smaller event and then see how it goes? Well, sometimes we have to see how things happen. And then if, if complaints are made, both the applicants and the, the DPS know that they will be on warning all the time to monitor their event, to keep it within the conditions that if they are set are agreed. And I have personally sat on, on applications before where we've reviewed a license and taken appropriate action. So it actually is unlike some of the other powers that the councillors and the law has, this is actually a very useful one and works. Okay, thank you very much. But there's, um, I think a public consultation would still be um, very beneficial because there are points that were brought up by um, Parnham um, in relation to um, benefits for the local area and for employment, which is not a part of this, I understand. Yeah. But I think that they are very misguided. I had clipper tees in Beminster for many years and we employed near enough 100 people by the time we sold it. And finding people to be employed in this area is 
an absolute nightmare because we have very, very low unemployment. Uh, Mr. Caton also suggested that those people visiting <clears throat> Parnham would be staying in Parnham, and yet I don't see how that benefits local businesses, particularly, or, or people living in the or having businesses in Beminster Town. We have no businesses in Netherbury. Sorry, okay. that's it, really. <laughs> Thank you. At the moment. My first, as far as the consultation, we would absolutely couldn't think of anything more lovely to do than to get everybody together and show up, show you the plans of what Parnham, what, how we're trying to put Parnham back together. Okay. The problem with that is we don't want to show you something which won't happen because that will just create more distrust. So we are unfortunately still a few stages away from the planning, which again is running side by side, but shouldn't really cross over too much with the licensing as to what we are and can do with the estate in order to generate an income to bring it back to life. So that's sort of one. We do want to do a consultation, but we haven't got enough information to get you and gather you all around. And I think we should do that slowly over many weekends um, so that we can look after smaller, more intimate groups instead of a, a great big consultation at once. And I think it needs to be managed very cleverly. Um, and as far as the local um, businesses and how we tend to use this, we, of course, we're not going to be able to, as I said, the numbers aren't going to be huge in the, in the first few years and people will leave the estate to go and see the area if they haven't visited before. But because we're trying to, um, we're basically trying to show people the wonder of the countryside and bring them back to nature, we want to try and encapsulate them for a weekend to wind down, to switch off, to look after them, to give them a lovely time. And we're hoping that they stay with us. Now, the, the way that the businesses would do well will be by what the produce that we buy, the materials that we buy, and any of the arts and crafts activities that will happen throughout the weekend. And those people coming in to support us to do that and entertain our guests. Okay, um, I Thank do have you. other questions, but I maybe we'll save those for later on. Let somebody else. Have a go. It, it's, I mean, this, this is your opportunity to ask questions to the applicant. So if you if you want to carry on with questions, that, that that's absolutely fine. Um, well, I am a bit concerned about this this comment that keeps coming up. In for the first few years, there will only be these few amount of people. I mean, I'm gathering then that the plans for Parnham and in, in say ten years hence will be for far larger. Up to 120 people. to 130 absolute maximum staying as we mentioned earlier oh. and it's um and that's many years off because that will involve the main house being used for accommodation which would probably be another 20. yeah i mean i am i have to say i am very concerned about the um a license and alcohol and food license being granted where there is hardly anywhere for um any entertainment to take place on site at the moment because putting something in a tent is not going to stop any noise whatsoever or in a marquee and i saw the plan for the restaurant for next year which is an open-sided marquee again it's not a building it's a marquee so uh any music uh being that's being held outside piped music live music any of that is going to reverberate around this whole area for about at least two miles up and around it may be on the ground not so far but once it rises and goes through this valley here we hear it all the way through and they'll be hearing it in Melflash as well this is this is a the real concern for an awful lot of people is the noise pollution and the light pollution again we have no chair, chair, I think that this I think this question has been covered already, and Mr. Caton has offered through carries to go okay, up to that yes, property and and, and, and do the monitoring. And all we're trying to do is re stop the duplication of, of of points. But thank you. Okay, yeah. Well, hopefully, um, Mr. Caton and I can get together afterwards and exchange our sure. uh, correspondence details. Sure. And great. Okay. Thank you. That, that sounds like a really good idea. Thank you. Definitely. Do you have uh, Do you have any further questions? No, I think for the moment I'm fine. Thank you. I can always ask Mr. Caton when I see him. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, 
uh, I am mindful that it is um, 5-2 um, and obviously we will be now coming on to the um, next uh, speaker which is um, Mr Green. Mr Green um, do you have an abundance of, of questions or do you just have I have a couple of questions. Chair, has Benjamin Seymour joined us at no, all? No, he's sent apologies. Okay. And I don't think James Green's here either, no. to be fair. No. 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 Okay, and I be, believe we have Mr Horner. Again, Mr Horner, do you have an abundance of questions um, or just a, a, a couple of questions to go through? Was it Mrs. Horner, Mrs. Horner, or Miss, Mrs. and Mr. Horner? Ju Ju Julia. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, he's away. Um, Hi. I just wanted, hello, hello. Um, I just wanted that there's, there's quite a sort of mischievous element around um, Bemminster and Bridport, and I was just wondering whether um, you sort of fully anticipated with the, the footpath in the middle and so on, um, that, that I mean, you know what they're, they're like trying to crash parties and get over, you know, huge fences into. I've seen it at places like Boomtown, for example. Um, you know, do, do do you feel you're fully equipped for the for the uh, absolutely less, um, well behaved element of Bridport and Beminster? Um Absolutely, it's as I said, with the volumes of people, there's they it will not be attractive for that crowd. Okay, thank you. Do you have any further questions? Uh, not at the moment, thanks. This is Horner. Okay. Um, well, with that in mind, what I'll do, um, I will break there because I'm, I'm mindful that we're getting uh, quite close to one o'clock. And then what we will do is when we reconvene at two o'clock, we will reconvene with the next speaker, which will be um, Chrissy Jenkins. So um, if you could all be back here for, for a sort of 2 p.m. prompt, that would be very much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.